Here's the message you're going to see when you hook your Mac or your PC up to the RC300 with a USB cable. And on the computer we get this message that says that it has recognized the RC300 as Drive F. And it's defaulted to this selection that actually is the one we want, which says Open Folder to View File. So if we open this up, we can see that we have a window that contains one folder that says Roland. Now you have to be very careful about not changing the structure of this folder um, hierarchy. So let's open this up. Inside the main Roland folder it says data and wave. Now we're not going to use the data. This is just system information. So we want to leave that alone. But under this folder that says wave we have all of the WAV files that are in all of the different memory locations which go all the way up to 99. So we have memory location 001 to 099 and under each one of those memory locations we have our three tracks. So if I open up this first track of the first memory location, there's a WAV file. And if I double click on the WAV file, it'll actually play the WAV file. So those are real WAV files. So underneath all of these different folders that have the memory location underscore track number, we have our audio WAV files. Like that. All right, so this is audio wave file number 013 underscore 1. If we back up one here, we'll see that it has actually been uh, stored under 0071. Well, why is that? Well, let's go to 13 and see what's under 13. Under 131, it's empty, so there's nothing under memory location 13. So what that means is that sometimes you can record something and then move it or whatever it's named when it's when it's recorded it's not renamed after it's moved so we see then that the names aren't real real critical but what is critical is that we don't ever change the structure of the hierarchy of this folder structure so if you look at this logically, it all makes sense. Essentially, you can move your files from another device as long as it's a WAV file. A WAV file is a WAV file. So if it meets the criteria of being a valid WAV file, you can move that WAV file into any one of these memory locations and any one of these tracks, so long as there's only one WAV file in that folder. So the RC300 is still sitting in the same mode, which says USB storage idling. Now, it has locked you out. It won't, it won't respond to any keystrokes anywhere on the control panel here. But what happens is that the changes that you have made back on your computer have actually been registered here. We're unplugged now. Now you say USB storage now working. It's uh, busy working away. So what it is doing now is it is integrating any changes that you have made in that file structure. Let's use 33 because 33 is obviously empty. So we're going to download this backing track to memory location 33. So the next thing we want to do is plug in the USB connector and then we'll be off to the races. We're going to use my backing track for this masquerade and here is the folder where the audio is for, for that project. There are two files here called masquerade backing track and the first thing I want to make sure that you understand is that you shouldn't try to download an mp3 file. So we have two different files. One of these is an mp3 and one is a WAV. So make sure that you only use the WAV files. Here's our old familiar top level folder with Roland, all, all caps. Open that. Under WAVE, we open that. Now, we said that we were going to load this file into memory location 33, and let's put it under track 1. 
So here we have 33 track 1 right here. We open this folder up and it's empty, of course, better be. So now we come over to where we have our uh, audio files on the PC and make sure that we select the uh, the one that's a WAV file and not the one that's an MP3 and we move it over here with the right button on the PC for a copy is to copy here, yes. So now it's going to copy this file over. This is a 40 megabyte file. Now, we had talked before about the names of these files once we move them. We could rename this 033 underscore 1, but as a test, let's not do that. Let's just, we'll shorten it a little bit. Let's shorten it down to masquerade, but we'll leave it as masquerade and see what happens now when it gets um, sent back to the RC300. Okay, I'm backing up through my file structure here and uh, we're back to the Roland. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the RC300 and unplug the USB, just leaving this the way it is on the PC. So let's see what happens. Back at the RC300 now, let's come over here and unplug our USB connector and then we will see that we have the USB storage now working. You probably also heard that the PC recognized that it had lost a USB connection and it gave us that tone. Now in just a minute here, it's still working. You can see the light there. Same light that goes on when you save a memory location. Now what we have is we have under memory location 33, we have, it says init memory because we have not given it a name, but you notice that it does not say empty. Also, over here under channel or track 1, we have an indication that we have data. So we're both going to find out here at the same time. Let's press the play pedal and see what happens. We do have liftoff. So as you can see, it's actually quite easy to move files in and out of the RC300. I have my RC300 hooked up again now to the USB, so if I click on the computer icon up here at the top left, I can see that it recognizes the RC300 as an external USB device, which is drive F. And if I open that, then I have my Roland file structure with all the WAV file folders underneath. We can take um, any files that we have on our computer that are valid WAV files and we can move them into these folders. So that's pretty straightforward. The advantage of that is if these WAV file folders have been generated from another loop station, in particular, or another RC300, or anything that knows about meter or beats per minute, that it is automatically going to align correctly with the beats per minute of the RC300. You might need to reset the beats per minute on the RC300, but a lot of times the RC300 will recognize how many beats per minute the file is, and it will adjust itself accordingly. But what if we want to take something that is a recorded piece of work or we want to record something externally and we want to take something that was not recorded on the RC300 and, uh, and turn it into a looping track or a backing track or a jam track. But the key thing here is that the audio file was not created on a loop station. How do we do that? Well, let's give it a try here. 